Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the low expected value of Dominaria. This is kind of a video response to what Rudy is saying. Now I do want to make a correction or at least let you guys know. Uh, Rudy quotes eBay prices a lot, but eBay there's always coupon discounts and stuff like that. You can go to Dave and Adams, you can go to Miniature Market, you can go to a lot of other places and buy boxes cheaper than eBay. The key with eBay is they always have promotional uh, discounts right now. And that's why the boxes, for in instance, I think he quoted Conspiracy Take the Crown at 105. You can get it for 91 on Dave and Adams right now, free shipping if you buy more than 200 and then you also get gifts, etc. Um, and then a lot of these other sets that are being quoted, uh, the price is eBay. He's correct. That is the eBay price. But um, if you are a savvy buyer, you probably are not buying from eBay at market price. You're probably going to use a coupon of some type. So I want to get straight away to the point of uh, his video was that this was a very popular set. Uh, it was manipulated and... At the end of the day, the card prices went from expected value box of 120 plus to 66 today. Uh, this is according to Don Glare. This is according to MTZ Stocks. Like there's not, it's pretty obvious that it has gone down a lot. And the two cards that I look at for a very good example are Con and Mox Amber. So the Rudy side, he talks about distribution and uh, investing in boxes and all that stuff. I'm going to really focus on the singles uh, because they have collapsed. So the expected value is based on if you were to open enough boxes, what would you expect? Uh, 66 is very low um, because it's lower than what a store pays for a box. Stores are paying for boxes at around 78, 76 at the lowest. Uh, now, I don't know what Channel Fireball, I don't know what Car Kingdom, I don't know what the big vendors pay. I assume that it is less money, but that is what a local store is likely to pay $78 a box. So if they were to open a box, they would expect to lose about $12. And that doesn't include time to open the box that they have to pay the employee. That doesn't include shipping of the cards, packaging, doesn't include any of that stuff. So when you see expected value dip this fast, um, I know that we just got the core set. And um, so it's not like it happened overnight. It was a time period. It really shows you that the, the set itself is very weak. Um, and the hype and all of this uh, tells me that any new set, um, as long as there's hype, they're just going to mismanage it. Um, this would be a very good example of mismanagement, in my opinion. No store wants the expected value of a box to drop like this. Um, it makes customers feel bad. Uh, customers who purchase singles from the store now feel bad. And customers are not going to buy boxes when the expected value is so low. If they're paying $100 a box, they're getting they're losing a third of their value and that's not even the cards they wanted, right? That's just a random bunch of cards. That does include foils. That does include all of this stuff. So what happened with this set? I mean, why it was hyped like mad by Wizards of the Coast. Um, there was so much hype around this set. Um, but when you look at the actual cards, a lot of people, and we'll call them out, a lot of people wanted to do... Uh, they wanted us to speculate on Sean Lay or whatever that card was. And on paper, it sounds good. Angel Tribal, who wouldn't want that? But then in theory, it, it didn't work out. It just didn't work out. I picked Lyra. And you can see at one point, she was over $30, almost $35. And that's when I got out. Not because I knew that this was going to happen, but because... I mean, when a Mythic hits $30, what else do you really want? That's kind of the top end of a non-Planeswalker uh, Mythic. So Sale is one that a lot of people picked as their speculation. It did not work out. On its surface, it looks like Restoration Angel, which is obviously very, very good. But it just 
doesn't have the flash. It doesn't have the flicker effect. It's not like it at all. So although you can curve into it, Metallic Mimic into the Free Drop Angel into this, or into History of Belania into this, it's not the same. So back to my original point about this set, the power level is surprisingly weak. Um, a lot of you guys probably like, oh, what are you talking about? In standard, you got you know a card in red, the chain dude, the goblin with the chains that was discussed about being banned, and he's very good. Free red, red for a free free uh, first strike does damage to planeswalkers, creatures, and players. But then you look a little deeper and you say, okay, what does this set actually have? It has Khan, that's pretty good. It has Mox Amber, which hasn't really found a home. If you want to take a risky gamble, that's the gamble you want to roll with because that is extreme risk, but very high reward. Uh, there's very little Moxes out there that have not done well uh, given time. So uh, we also have History. Um, all these cards were super expensive. And then they dropped that they uh, curved out. They just uh, they dropped even more than they should have, in my opinion, because of mistakes that were made. Um, there was too much hype on the set. There was too much uh, belief that this would be the set that brings back magic. It is not. Uh, it's nice that Richard Garfield came back, but it didn't have a land base. If you look at every single successful set that has done well. It has a land base at rare, which people really want. And that was the problem I had picked with this set, is it doesn't have a land base to support it. Because uh, land, you know it's going to be valuable. Fetch lands, shock lands, you know these things sell. And you know they hold value eternally. Besides con and you know maybe a few other cards, there's nothing in this set that is seeing play in modern right now. Because it's not strong enough. And let's not even talk about legacy, right? I mean, the most, ex the second most expensive card in the set is Teffy, and Teffy is about thirty-five bucks. But do you think he'll replace JST Mind Sculptor? Here's a really good spec: uh, Gilded Lotus. When it drops below two, we're not done dropping yet. There's still probably a few good months where we're going to continue to drop. That's a good spec. Um, it's a beautiful card. I think overall, you know, some cards that are reprinted, they have known values. And this is a known value card, which is easy to buy into at $2, because you know that it's definitely not $2. And five years from now, assuming it's not reprinted into oblivion. So you have kind of a core issue here. And the core issue is the mismanagement of expectations. Uh, people can only be disappointed so often. Imagine the guy who bought the four cons, he sees it go up a few dollars, and then boom. Mox Amber is even worse. Lyra, uh, you bought into the hype for Lyra, which you never want to do. You want to buy the card before it hypes up. Then you are out, you know, 20 bucks a copy. Place that's 80 bucks. Uh, it's not a good feeling. Uh, the volatility of this market is actually very bad for new players. Because if you ask who's buying all these cards at like the peak price, it's casual players that don't know better. So they spend all their allowance money or they spend a, a paycheck at work to you know, buy these car singles at a huge price. And it doesn't really benefit the store for such a big price difference, in my opinion, um, mainly because uh, you know, it, the store is reliant on its customers. Uh, a good store will lose money to retain customers. That sounds re really crazy, but I do that in my business all the time. If I make a mistake, we comp your entire, like, we comp everything. And we had to do that with a dentist recently, and that was fine. Um, because there was a mistake that uh, our, one of our interns made, and that's, that's on me for not managing her properly. But yeah, anyway, the my point is uh, quite simple. It's the fact that expectations are not being managed correctly and they're really kind of exploiting uh, casual players because they're the ones who are injured most from this as experienced players i hope and i've said many times you do not want to buy into the hype you do not want to buy a card 
if you can i mean if you need a card to play with yeah but if at all possible don't buy it so that's another pet peeve i'm gonna go on a slight tangent a lot of these youtubers make these decks and these decks are like ideal decks right they're net decks they're like if you have infinite amount of money and you didn't expect these cards to go down and plummet in price even if you had infinite amount of money it's just kind of sickening to see these cards go down in price and you know what's happening wait so then play like a pseudo deck right and that's why i play the majority of the time i don't play the ideal net deck i play like a deck where it's kind of like a hodgepodge and then i'm hoping that the cons go down the lyras go down a little bit after i can rebuy into lyra um i'm hoping for all this stuff and i think that's the majority of players because you know so when people are doing deck techs and it's like oh, okay we got four teffies we got four cons during the the height you know when it's most popular right because that's when you get the most views i think that's a big disservice to the people watching the video because they're going to go out and they're going to buy the cards at the peak and then a few days later or a few weeks later they're going to be out tons of money um, it's because they don't play the card deck they've never played the deck a lot of these youtubers never played the deck that they're talking about buying because even me like i have i'm financially a stable so i can buy the card i'm just not going to because i know karn will be cheaper later so instead of playing karn i'll play something else anyway that's my my opinion bye guys